Hey, what's going on? Justin back here from Modern Mixing, and today I'm going to show you how you can mix your bass and your kick drum um, to get a little bit better separation between the two. So I'm going to show you the common method that most people show, um, and then I'll show you one method. There's tons of different methods to do this, but that being said, if you can understand the principles that I'm going to show you, then you can literally use any tool in the world you want. And you can get similar things um, to what I'm going to show you. Um, also, I'm going to include a link to uh, one of the plugins that I use. It's absolutely free. You can download it. Um, it's supposed to emulate tape. Um, I'm not from the tape generation, so I can't validate that. But all I do know is it sounds really good. So... Um, get your hands on that but anyways I'll show you what you can go from which is the first thing I'm gonna play and then I'll show you after um, what it sounds like and then I'll go into it and show you how you can do it now keep in mind I put this um, I don't even want to call it a beat because I really just threw it together some chords and everything but I wanted to put some strings and some other sounds and stuff in there just so that um, there's more stuff that kind of convolutes or sort of distracts the ear from the bass and and the kick so that um, it really makes you work that much harder to try to get the bass and the kick to stand out on their own so um, so anyways don't judge the production please <laughs> but um, but yeah here we go so this is without the processing I'll play that now All right, so that was without the processing. I tried to use an 808 style kick. It was a 909 in this case with a really, really deep sub to it and also a bass line with a really, really deep sub just to show you that it is possible to make those two sounds exist without actually changing the samples. Um, so this is what it sounds like with, uh, with the processing. Again, before. All right, so I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you don't have, um, if you're listening on laptop or something like that, you should probably um, get to a decent set of speakers or even headphones or something. That way you can hear it a little bit better. But um, Ideally, the way it came out, um, normally what I do is I try to pick the best samples. So I try not to get to the point where I'm having to do stuff like this. But um, but if you are given, say, a session to mix and you're really trying to be true to the original sound and you don't want to do too much replacement, um, these are some alternatives. Or you can just add this into your mix or your, your production or your mixing or whatever just for fun. You know, see, see what kind of sounds you can get. So... The conventional method normally says, okay, let's grab an EQ with the bass and the kick. Let's grab an EQ and um, where the heck am I going here? All right. So they say boost up where you want the kick and then cut out where the bass is and, and then do the opposite on the bass you know, boost up where you want the bass or where the bass you think lives and then cut out where the kick is supposed to live. So let's listen to that without the EQ. All right, let's activate the EQ now. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not too impressed, to be honest with you. So, this is how I would sort of approach it. So, with the kick, what I did was I used a transient shaper. Now, you can get, there's lots of programs that have one stock. I just happen to use the Waves one, but you can, you know, use um, any transient shaper should work. Um, and what this does is it... Um, it brings out the attack on the drum or the kick drum. So if the kick drum is very, um, it's very bottom endy and there's not 
there's not that attack to it. What this does is it brings out that initial first hit of the kick drum. Um, and what that does is it al allows your ear to find the kick and it gives you a perception of it being closer. So without this plug-in engage, the kick, it's bottomy, it's rumbly, and it's kind of hard to dis like discern where it is in the mix. It kind of just sounds like it's in there somewhere, but you can't really find out where it is. So this is without the, well actually I'll solo the kick. This is without the plugin engaged. Come on, play. And this is with it on. So, some people might be like, well, the f you know, the without it, it actually sounds better. There's more bass and all that stuff. Yeah, that's great. But once you throw it into the mix, you know, you can't find it. There's so many other things going on with, with bottom end in them. You know, the bass has lots of bottom end. You know, the pads, the strings, you know, they all have some sort of bottom end character to them. So, the kick gets lost. So, it's not as simple as just, well, cut out the bass out of everything else. And then the kick should have some space. It doesn't doesn't work it's not that simple so now if you're listening to it with this transient shaper engage you say well it kind of lost a little bit of the bottom end well the the alternative to that is to add a little bit of eq some bottom end so that's what i did <clears throat> so everything off and then on again a lot tighter a lot punchier um but again this is without the this the other stuff engaged so um it's a lot better to um, to see it with everything on so let's do that again without and with and also notice this level here so it's it's not like the kick drum's getting louder necessarily it's just you bring out the apparent volume um, and you're not really changing the peak volume, you're just really changing the apparent volume. So it sounds louder or it's easier to hear, but you're not actually turning up the volume knob. So here we go without and then with again. Without. With. All right, so next one is the bass. So let's see. So bass drum. So the plugin that I use for this one is called the Ferric TDS. Now this plugin's been around for I don't know, probably three years now, two years, three years. But it's actually really good. You have your input knob here, and when you um. You know what? I'm going to have to go back to that transient plugin because I didn't really explain what I did. Okay, so the input, what I did was I cranked the input up, and um, what it did was it bring out some of the mid range and the bass. It kind of added some harmonic distortion. So I'll turn it down and then I'll turn it up and I'll show you what's going on with the bass as I turn it up. Let's solo it. Okay. And I'll leave the EQ off. Now, let's drive it up. Now, it is actually increasing the volume. It is increasing the volume, but what it's actually doing, if you listen closely, it's actually grinding up that mid-range in the bass, and it's really distorting it and bringing it out and making it um, making it stand out or punch through the mix so in this situation it wasn't enough okay you, well I don't really want to explain the plugin I mean you guys can figure that stuff out on your own but this knob here is a saturation knob so um, I guess it's its job is to kind of uh, shape the peaks in a way that sounds pleasing like distorting it and distorting it in a way so it's not like for instance digital distortion is considered unpleasing to the ear so this is kind of another form of distortion the saturation and um, it does it more in a pleasing way and that's 
the tape uh, sound, I guess, that it's built into the saturation. So, um, uh, so what do we want to do next? Let's see. Okay, yeah. So I also added an EQ. I boosted some of the top end, well, a lot of the top end, and a little bit of the low end, uh, just to make it pull through a little bit more. And we'll see what that sounds like without it and with it. And then I'll show you without all of this and then turn it back on. So you can see the mid range is definitely a lot more present now. So let's do it in the mix again. And let's turn everything off and then turn it back on again. I got to do these separately here. All right, so there you go. It cuts through a little bit. Okay, so let me quickly bring this up. So this knob here is the actual transient. And if I was to draw out a waveform, actually, you know what? I can bring out the kick. So you can see, see the first initial hit on the kick. It's almost like it's it's kind of like fading into the kick. So the transient is that first initial hit. So just imagine if I'm pulling this knob up right here this first initial hit on the kick drum is actually being pulled up as well so that's that first bang that's that's what it's doing it's it's bringing out the kick by having that first initial hit um, a lot louder to your ear so everything else after it doesn't really change that much it's just that first initial hit um and you know the duration i really don't want to explain all this other stuff if you want to learn about the plugin there's you can read the manual or whatever but just know what it's doing and why I'm using it. Um, so that's it. Until next time. Oh yeah, download the the, the plugin. I'll set it in the link and also subscribe, like, comment, um, share, all that stuff. Thank you.